too. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, I got a super cool message from a Devo about our conversation. Really? Ab- about uh, devotees. And uh, I, w- I-, I have no desire to read the full message or put it on blast. But um, this was an able-bodied uh, woman devotee who, um, as a part of some of her attraction to um, guys, has to do with the fact of, of their disability. And I got like, it was so funny because she said, she said, <laughs> she's like, she said You're that, super hot. No, 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 no. Uh, she's in a relationship, but uh, they, they were saying how um, no, the whole time she was thinking like, nope, 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 those idiots, they got it wrong, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm. but then we would say something that would like redeem ourselves, and she'd be like, oh, okay, 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 you won me back, you won me what back. What were so we I guess, saying that was wrong? I don't like the dude, I don't, parts. I don't remember. The bottom line is she was saying is like there there are a few bad apples that spoil it for the whole bunch, but in her experience, there's a lot of normal people. And they have got their own, like, private message boards that converse back and forth and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, Devos all wear converse. I'm just kidding. Yes. That's the dumbest yes. point of all time. Um, the, the- <laughs> uh, but, no, but it, it is kind of interesting when you actually think about it because it's like you wouldn't fault someone for, like, dating someone of a different race or something but it, like as soon as people start dating someone that has a disability it's like oh are you just that one of those creepy people that's a, that's uh only attracted to 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 disabled people that's disgusting and i well, guess it could be it feels kind of like weirdly dehumanizing i think to uh the folks with disabilities because they're feeling like oh this person doesn't actually like me for me they only like me for my disability and I don't even see myself as that, you know, or whatever. I don't identify as that. I'm still a person. I still have feelings. You know, maybe they were an able-bodied person at one point. Maybe they were disabled from birth. Who knows? But either way, it's, like, very dehumanizing, and it's very, like, it feels it feels creepy. But at the same time, like, maybe these people are just, like, really, they feel comfortable around uh, disabled people because of all sorts of different reasons, and that's fine. Yeah, I think it's half half yes, half no. I think it's similar to the same way as like a guy would be like, I like Hispanic chicks with big butts. That's a preference, you yeah. know, versus someone being like, oh, I like quads that use wheelchairs. Like, okay, you know, it's yeah. like it's it, it's the same. And it, and I don't know why I like Hispanics with big butts. I got no idea why I like you know dark hair, dark eyes, big butt. I, I've no I have no idea why I like that, but I know I like it. You know, I think it's the same way that we all ha- we all have our own preferences, and that just happens to be their preference. Yeah, um, I like small butts, big wheelchairs. Mm. <laughs> you like heavy wheelchairs. I like small butts and I like wheelchairs. You <laughs> other devos can't deny when a girl rolls in with a... <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> with an itty-bitty waist and a wheelchair in your face, you get sprung. <laughs> when when no. a girl rolls in with a 24-inch rims, <laughs> popping, a, popping a wheelie in your face. <laughs> that's funny you you ask if she used cats <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh my god no but i think it's i think the diva thing is is so like ugh, divos is because people get bad uh impressions of them at like expos and things like that where Dude, they're like n- people will creepy like they'll go to these places knowing that there's going to be disabled people and like prey on them kind of like or they'll see one out the mall and they're like pouncing like it's it's a very weird thing but if you're just like a guy like because because you're right it, there's a lot of creepy people that spoil the whole bunch and there's also dudes that are hella creepy that like you said if you have a preference for latinas with big butts or whatever like th- there's there's plenty of people that will observe that from afar and not be creepy at all and, and in their head just be like damn but then there's also going to be some guys that are going around the mall going like, damn, mommy, oh, my God, that ass. And then that's like, oh, my God, guys that love Latinas with big butts are so creepy. It's like, no, it's just those guys. So it's like it, it, I can see the flip side of the coin. The real life example that I, th- I think about with you and I is our, is our friend Kat. She got two boyfriends like she's in a polyamorous relationship and very open about it. And to us, it's super normal to go hang out with her and her boyfriends like it's not uncommon and it's even more fun when we go out in groups of people and like, they wait, get really what? confused like wait who's dating who what <laughs> that like, was they don't, so they don't, funny at your birthday yeah, yeah they have no idea and i 
I think what's what's super cool is like just like people who are polyamorous and just like people that are into BDSM or just like people that are uh, gay, straight, trans, whatever, like a lot of people are extremely misunderstood and misrepresented because the people representing them are usually the people that hate them, right? So mm, it's like, yeah. it's like I my experience as a wheelchair user inside of the wheelchair community is almost everyone doesn't like Devos um, because they've had really bad experiences with devos or they don't necessarily agree with them like i think there's there's even stuff that i don't necessarily agree with slash get like i think a lot of devos also want to maybe eventually be disabled themselves too and i'm not yeah, sure that's if, a weird one I, that's I, that's what was my next question actually which do you think is more hated the the transabled or the devos inside of the disability community i don't think devos are going to pretend to be disabled i think devos are like oh, I like disabled people, and if I do become disabled, like, that's okay, slash, I actually hope that does happen so I can feel fit in. I think the I same way, I'm like... I saying, like, do you think that oh, I'm, I'm, get, yeah, I'm getting yeah. there. I'm getting there. In the same way that, like, in the HIV AIDS community, there's bug chasers, right? And everyone's like, what are you doing? Like, oh, I just want to get, you know, AIDS so I can fit in with the gay community. Like, everyone, you know, is chasing it down or whatever. But I think... What's what is more hated is the people that are are transabled, and there's quite a few of them that are like they're not actually disabled, but they live the life of a disabled person and act as if they're disabled. I actually or have disabled you know, themselves, or have disabled themselves exactly. Like I I almost have more empathy for those people because I I can't imagine what type of life that you have had to go through that you've created some type of psychological mechanism, some type of coping skill. And the way you cope is, is by pretending to be disabled like that to me, mm -hmm. someone who's dealt with mental health my whole life. And I, and I know a lot of people that do deal with mental health issues and a wide array of them. I I'm like, damn, that person's got a, that person's really jacked up so i i almost have like a sympathy for them but i'd say inside of the community everyone hates the transabled people everyone is like yo let me get this straight let me get this straight the worst thing that ever happened to me in my entire life that changed me forever that i would pay millions and millions of dollars to reverse if i could but i can't is something that you did to yourself what you know it's 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 very much hated and i think um, when it comes to devotees, I think half the people are open to it, and I think half the people are not open to it. But I think it's just a matter of conversation. Like, the person I was talking to, she was saying how, like, she doesn't disclose the fact that she's a devotee at, at the first, because sometimes when she does disclose it, the person is like, oh, hell no, I thought you were just a regular person, but you want to be with me because you like my the way my hands look because they're all crunched up? No, fuck you, get out of here, you know, and they'll leave. But then other people are like, she's like, hey, I'm a devotee, and what that means is like, I actually already know a lot about you and your condition, and I know what to do and what not to do, and I know the language, and I know the issues, and like, I can be an advocate for you and on your team, and like, you know, it's, there's, it's, it's a whole complicated thing, but I think mostly the issue comes down to, what happens in any type of um, fetish is not the right word, but I don't know how to say it any other way. Whatever, whatever uh, happens, yeah. it's not. It's not. A, I don't think. It, I don't really consider it a fetish because fetish is only purely sexual. But anyway, so people that have those issues are usually represented by people that don't have those issues slash aren't them. Like, how many times have you ever heard a straight person talk about trans people and representing trans people? And it's like that's. How about we? How about we listen from a trans person instead? Why do we gotta listen to some able-bodied fucker? Someone who, someone who's a, a cisgendered like, why do we have to listen to them? They have no fucking clue what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I just, I just think it's one of those things. That usually, the issue tends to be that whatever group, I mean, and 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 I feel this way sometimes too. Like I, I feel like wheelchair users get hella ableism and are represented in a weird, weird freaking light, and. You know, so I, I, I think a lot of people can understand that. And that, that's where I think that, like, it can become a super superpower. Like, um, Sophie Morgan on her Instagram put up a little promo to her new YouTube video, and she was talking about, you know, some of the great things that have come out of her life by being a wheelchair user. And she was saying how, like, it's an inside ticket to empathize and communicate with other groups of people that have lived extremely different lives than you, but because you're all kind of considered, like, you know, outcasts or like weirdos or like different, like we're, we're all a member of the club of people that weren't 
invited to be a part of any other clubs, basically. Mm, yeah. You know, so it gives us that ability to to other minority groups, to other marginalized groups, to other people that are dealing with mental health issues or physical health issues or wh- whatever. Like we, yeah. can t- we, we tend to be able to like empathize and relate to that. Like, I think, I think like one of my friends, uh, actually this, this was on my podcast back in the day. It was like in the thirties, I think episode, maybe like 36 or something. My friend Cece, he's um, a musician and we were talking about how like, we're talking about, uh, I think we're, I think we're talking about cultural, um, what's it called when people steal other people's culture? What am I talking cultural about? Pro- cultural appropriation. Yes, cultural appropriation. We're talking about cultural appropriation and how he was like saying how a lot of times in music, like um, black folks feel that white folks are appropriating their culture of music and then that becomes the standard almost. And like that becomes the new fashion, but no appro- no att- attribution is ever given back to the black community or whatever. Like for example, um, uh, you know, a lot of trends with hair and stuff like that are quote unquote like stolen from the black community or whatever, and then are be- and then become mainstream or people, you know, whatever. But the the example that he gave was like he was like, but look at Eminem. He's embraced by the hip hop community by the black community because he he doesn't just like appropriate it. He like embraced it and like embedded himself in that culture and that's why he's accepted to such a high degree and i think the same could happen with anyone in any sort of group it's like if you just want to come in and only take 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 and like the only way reason why you're coming into like a certain group of people whether it's disabled people or gay people or trans people or asian people or you know whoever and you're only going in to like take and like take advantage of then that's where everyone gets upset but if you were to, for example, again, to go back to like um, an, another type of fetish is like, you know, if you went and lived it, like, OK, I'm really attracted to, um, you know, ch- Japanese people or something. If you went and lived in Japan and like lived in their culture and like embraced that and like learned the language and all these things like that's fine. But if you're just like trying to you know you know what i mean do you get what i'm trying to go with that it's like if you so yeah, if you actually yeah. embed yourself in it and embrace it and appreciate for all that it is not just the sexual things and not just the the self-gratifying things if you embrace it for everything that it is i think that's fine and i think that's actually appreciation i think that's good yeah i think there's cultural appropriation and i think there's cultural appreciation and i mm-hmm. think those lines get crossed um where I think a lot of people see appreciation and scream appropriation. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, I don't know, man. I think we live, like, thanks to the internet, we currently live in a very flat and small world, which means that everyone's Are influenced by... Are you a flat by, earther, bro? No. Um, everyone's influenced by everyone online so it's like we we take like ooh, like i got hair that looks kind of like that let me try that hairstyle Ooh, mm-hmm. i like that kind of fashion let me try that fashion Ooh, that that's a pretty color pattern or or a pretty colored dress or whatever i mean i even think about that girl who got slammed for wearing like a japanese dress yeah she's wearing like a kimono style dress yeah. or whatever and it's like that is quite literally appreciating it the was beauty funny because of a dress a lot of the the press in, I don't remember exactly where it was taken from, but whatever country that it was representing, the the media over there was actually praising her and saying that they think it's beautiful that they that she would wear something from their culture and represent it. So it's just so funny that, like you said, it's like most of the time when people are getting angry or representing someone, it's typically not the people from that group. It's like someone else just getting like recreationally Offe- outraged, offended on their behalf. Thanks, yeah, Twitter. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Twitter. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, that just that happens a lot. But whatever. Sometimes people don't they they don't have a voice, and they do need someone to speak up for them or whatever. But um, you know, I think most of the time we should just let people art. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full episode, you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, you can click right here. If you want to watch more clips, we got two more right over here.